You're listening to London Today with Andy Usman. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email londontoday at cjbk.com or call 519-643-1290. I'm Sabrina Shannon, reporting from Pembroke, Ontario. I am 10 years old and go to the Lady of the Ridge School. I am allergic to dairy, milk, soy, and peanuts. And I hope you like my story. Went to the Pembroke General Hospital and they told me she was still at the school and there I saw her being transferred out of the school with her arm dangling and lifeless and I knew it was uh, very, I knew it was anaphylaxis because it was around the lunch hour time. Um, there at the Pembroke General Hospital she was resuscitated and then she was transferred to the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and it was there that she was um, declared brain dead. Very brave woman. Sarah Shannon sharing the story in the last few minutes of the death of her daughter, Sabrina, who had a food allergy, which killed her at school. It's an incredibly sad story, and it's a wake-up call to all of us. Uh, because of that death and because of the incredible tenacity of uh, Sarah Shannon, the mom, uh, we now have something called Sabrina's Law. We're in conversation this hour about allergy the whole hour, and we have uh, with us Elizabeth Goldenberg, who's a f food allergy expert, uh, Elizabeth, let's just go over Sabrina's Law, which uh, we, we need a little refresher course on. It affects uh, all of us, all of our kids in our schools. Tell us what uh, Sabrina's Law says. Uh, it is now um, required that when you have an identified allergic student, um, teachers be all informed that this is a student, this is the picture, this is the child's allergies, this is the emergency protocol to follow, here's where the medication is. Um, teachers now have some training in life-saving measures to take to treat an allergic reaction. In this case, what failed for Sabrina was they didn't use her EpiPen and they didn't call 911, they called Sarah. And that's really unfortunate. The protocol is use the EpiPen, call 911, then call the parent. Um, and it's also put in place through Sabrina's law that there have to be strategies for risk management in schools. And that's the connection to why schools have become peanut-free. Principals were saying peanut butter is, or peanut products are the hardest allergen for us to manage. They spread everywhere. They're oily. They're in so many lunches. And that's why you see school-wide um, nut protocols. We are having such a debate right now about peanut butter uh, in our schools. And I know that uh, when we chatted yesterday, you, you have... Uh, some some strong thoughts about this uh, wow peanut butter, this substitute to peanut butter. We've had quite a debate on the show in the last few days uh, about the product. Uh, your thoughts? Well, I want to say thank you, Andy. I really appreciate how you've been trying to handle this issue and the support that you've shown to what I call the, the allergic community or the peanut allergic community. I'm also very grateful for the articles that have appeared um, through the Free Press editor and through Ian Gillespie in the London Free Press. I didn't necessarily expect to see and even to hear through the comments on your show uh, such positive support. I'm very upset about the wow butter controversy. And the reason is uh, Bill Tucker of the Thames Valley District School Board sent out a memo to principals saying we're hearing that lunchroom supervisors, teachers are having difficulty distinguishing wow butter sandwiches from peanut butter sandwiches. They look identical absolutely identical, they smell identical, they taste identical. That's Wow Butter's selling point, if you read the uh, jar of it. Instead of saying, you know what, instead of Wow Butter saying, we ought to not push on this subject, if elementary school students, our most vulnerable allergic population, are having their safety or their security compromised because teachers are saying, I can't detect what's Wow Butter, I can't detect what's peanut butter, then maybe we ought to just back off on selling to elementary schools. Instead, they threw their allergic customers under the bus and said, uh, disgruntled parents, please call your school boards, you know, make some noise, make some change. And you have wonderful companies serving the allergic community well, like Enjoy Life Foods. You know, I can't imagine a company like that. They're free of all the top allergens. They're gluten-free. They sell to the allergic consumer. Other people like their foods because they taste great. You can sell well better that way. But when you have an issue develop 
And it's a tiny little issue in the Thames Valley School Board. Instead of letting it ride, they instigated all of this controversy to make money. On the face of it, you know, a company comes along, they, they, they see that there is a need here, and that is uh, for a product uh, which tastes and looks like a peanut butter, but is safe. So on the face of it, you think, well, that's a wonderful thing, and my goodness, they've done a good job. They've invented a peanut butter that is safe for kids who have an allergy to peanut butter. Uh, where the controversy comes in, of course, is when other parents want to take this product to school or even the kids who have the allergy uh, take the product to school and you can't tell one from the other. Then you're literally getting into dangerous territory. Personally, and I'm naive on this, I'm a layman on this, I'm not an expert, I don't see how you can possibly have this other product in our schools and, and, uh, and do everything you can to save lives because if the product is in the school, you can't tell one from the other and you're endangering kids' lives. I agree with you completely, and what I've seen uh, Wow Butter say online, because I do have a food allergy community online on, on Facebook and on my blog, they'll say a labeled lunch is a safe lunch. Download labels from our website, and they show a picture on their website of a sandwich box with a label on it. Anybody can do that, you know, and um, whether the lunch is safe or not, right? Um, even if it is supposedly wow butter in there, they do have no way of distinguishing it whatsoever. And I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, we all know we can't uh, have open uh, bottles of alcohol in our car. If I take a beer bottle, you know, and I wash it out, I fill it up with water, and I label it water, are the police just going to nod their head at me and let me go? No. It's going to cause confusion. I'm going to get pulled over. Resources are going to be wasted. People are going to worry about security. Elizabeth, someone made the analogy the other day. They said it's a little bit like sending your kid to school uh, with a gun with no bullets in it. Uh, and then you can say, oh, it's totally safe. There are no bullets in the gun. I agree. It, it's a toy gun. I labeled it toy. It's fine. I mean, it's not fine. That's the level of risk involved with peanut butter. And uh, we do need to help. You mentioned teachers and their confidence levels. We have to help them feel confident. Let me just throw this to our listeners, because what we want to stress to our listeners that the phone lines are open, 643-1290. I want to share with you a couple of comments from Ian Gillespie's article, which I was a little shocked by how a parent could be that cavalier. Uh, Ian Gillespie, in his article on the weekend, quoted one uh, parent as writing, Tell me why must my kid accommodate your kid with their allergy? I will send peanut butter, eggs, fish, hell, even beer with my kid if that's what they want. It's surprising, <laughs> Elizabeth, what attitudes we have out there. Well, I think the, those people came out of the woodwork because of the controversy Wow Better created. You know, on the public forum generally with the free press articles in your show, We've seen a lot of support, but I have an answer to that gentleman. If that gentleman sends in peanut butter because I can't tell him what to do, and technically I can't have him arrested, I can't risk his child, you know, I don't have a peanut-sniffing dog, if my son gets injured due to his move, he will be involved in litigation. He will be named in that lawsuit. He'll probably be bankrupt within a few months. So if he just cares about what involves himself and his kids, he needs to think about the liability issues involved. I am a lawyer. I'm not only a food allergy expert, and I make it my business to research litigation from allergic By injuries. the way, folks, if you didn't understand the last 30 seconds, what she's saying is she's going to sue your pants off. Let's go to the phone line. Scott, go ahead. Well, I have two scenarios in, in my, my family. I have a sister with an allergy to sesame seeds that lands her in oxygen tents overnight, and... She's so careful, but it's just it can just trigger like that. And then my 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 wife's daughter has the peanut allergy, and going to the school, the wild butter. What a great idea! Laurel actually likes peanut the wild butter, but you know if someone does happen to bring peanut butter in there and they eat that peanut butter and they come over and they shake hands or they touch Laurel in any way, shape, or form, she's now facing potential death. And and when they were up north. In Sundridge, they were trying to get the peanuts out of the school up there, and the school, the parents were all yelling, yes, but it's so easy for my kids to make a peanut butter sandwich. And my my wife just turned and looked at that individual and said, okay, fine. You let your kids bring their peanut butter sandwiches, and when my daughter is dead, 
and your kids are happy eating their peanut butter sandwich, and the look on that gentleman's face totally changed. Scott, appreciate, just, I appreciate okay. the call. Let me just ask you this, Scott. Are you concerned of where all of this is going? We've got the peanut butter allergy, but now we're starting to hear about allergies to a host of other products. Uh, you know, Andy, I, I've had this conversation hundreds and hundreds of times before where today we are a victim of the foods that we eat. Now, and my biggest analogy is... I don't know if I can, I, I'm going to say a, a, a white substance I kept in the fridge as a kid that's called milk, and it would last two or three days, and that last three or four weeks. What are we doing? And it just concerns me what's going on in our food and the, and the processes that are uh, being consumed Scott, to make it more you, marketable. You, you've, you've nailed it. There's a whole show right there. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, you're seeing, if you've got your eyes open, you are seeing a dramatic change in the retail industry all around us to service the needs that are arising from these food allergies. I mean, you you don't have to drive very far in London now to see the word gluten-free because stores are popping up. We have a new one just uh, near where I live in the west end of the city on Springbank Drive uh, just to address this one specific area of this uh, food allergy story. We'll be back with uh, a woman who has that issue when we come back in just a moment right here on London Today on News Talk 1290 CJBK.